Hello, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to make a product box mock-up and folding box animation in Blender. Let's get started. Before starting, I would like to introduce an online tool. Pactora is an online packaging design tool that allows users to customize their packaging with their own images, logos, and text. You can easily make product mock-ups in minutes. Packdora gives you the ability to change the dimensions, colors, and materials of your packaging, as well as add your own branding elements. And best of all, you can see a 3D preview of your design before you order. So whether you're a small business owner looking for unique packaging for your products, or a graphic designer wanting to experiment with 3D packaging design, Packdora is the perfect tool for you. Sign up to Packdora for free with your Google account or email address. Choose any plan for your needs. If you subscribe to Pactora with the code I provided, you will have an extra 20% discount at the checkout. I will share the exclusive discount code in the video description. All right. We'll use Pactora's templates and die line generators to make a 3D mock-up in Blender. Die lines show the dimensions, folds, and cut lines necessary to create the final packaging. You can customize the sizes as you wish. I will leave them as they are. Select PDF format and download the die line. Convert the PDF into JPEG format online and download. I will share the website link in the video description. Open a new Blender file. Import the die line you convert as a reference image. Press Alt-R to clear the rotation. Add a plane. Switch to edit mode and x-ray mode. S key to scale up. Select the die line image and move down so that will be symmetric on the y-axis. Press Ctrl R and add a loop cut just in the middle. Select the bottom vertices and delete them. Add a mirror modifier. Select the mirror axis Y. So we can work symmetrically on the y-axis. Make the reference image unselectable. Align the edges with the blue lines in the die line. Blue lines are the final size of your print product after it's been cut. It's like using scissors to cut along a dotted line on a craft project. Don't forget to enable the clipping option, so you can merge the vertices on the mirror line. Alright, let's add vertical loop cuts so that align with the image. Now, add horizontal loops cuts. Switch the face selection mode and delete the unnecessary faces. Dissolve the unnecessary edges.
press K key to activate the knife tool and cut the geometry from the reference lines. Select the vertices, press shift Control b scroll up the mouse wheel, and bevel. All right, it's time to rig the box. Go to edit mode, select the vertex, press shift S and cursor to selected. Switch back to object mode. Go to the armature menu and add a single bone. Rotate 90 degrees on the Y axis. Switch the edit mode, select the tip of the bone, enable the move tool and bring it to the red line. Crease lines show where to fold the material to make the box or package. This is represented by the red lines. They're like guidelines, so the folds happen in the right places. In the same way, extrude the bone to the red line. Select the bone and press Shift D to duplicate. Press Alt P to clear the parent. Rotate 90 degrees and put the root of the on the red line. In the same way, duplicate and place the bones properly. All right, let's select the bones. Duplicate the bones and mirror on the Y axis. Bring the bones to the proper places. Select the bone, hold down the shift to select the other bone and select the middle bone lastly. Press Ctrl P and make a parent. In the same way, make parents the others. All right, switch to pose mode and test the bones if they work properly. All of them work properly. Switch to object mode. Enable the bone names in the viewport. Select the box and apply the mirror modifier. Select the box, then select the armature, press Ctrl P and set parent with empty groups. When we switch to edit mode, we can see the vertex groups belonging to each bone. Select the bone 011 from the list. Select the faces to assign and click the assign. 
in the same way, assign the vertex groups to other bones. Switch to pose mode and test the rig. That's it. Let's assign vertex groups for other bones. All right, the rig works properly and deforms the geometry. Press Alt-R to clear the poses. Select the box and add a solidify modifier to add thickness. Enable the cavity option in the viewport. Set the thickness value to 0.015. All right, it's time to animate the box folding. Select the armature and switch to the pose mode. Select the bone, press the K key, and add a rotation keyframe at frame 1. Go to the frame 20. Rotate the bone negative 90 degrees on the Y axis. Add another rotation keyframe. Select the bone and add keyframes in the same way. Switch the pivot point to individual origins. Select these two bones, rotate 90 degrees on the Z axis, and add keyframes. Switch back the pivot point to the median. Select the bone, rotate 90 degrees on the x-axis, and keyframes. All right, let's play the animation. That's it. Hide the armature in the viewport. It's time to add materials. Select the box and hit the Z key to switch to Material Preview. Go to the Material Properties tab and add a material slot. 
click the new button to add material. Rename the material as Interfaces. Select the brownish base color. Increase the roughness value. Add another material slot and rename it as Outer Faces. Select the base color and decrease the roughness value. Go to the Modifier tab. In the Solidify modifier, open up the Material panel and set the Material Offset to 1. That's it. Let's add the Blender logo on the box. First, unwrap the UV map. Go to the UV Editing workspace. Hit the A key to select all faces. Go to the UV menu and Smart UV Project. Go to the Texture Painting workspace. Switch to the Material Preview. Go to the Texture Slots menu. Select the Outer Faces material. Click the plus icon and add a base color texture. Set the resolution to 4K. Set the alpha value to 0 and click the OK button. Add a new texture and switch the mapping method to the stencil. Switch the falloff type to constant. Go to the Texture Properties tab and open the Blender logo image in PNG format. Switch to the top view. Hold down the right mouse button to move the stencil where you want. Hold down the Shift key and right mouse button to resize the logo. Apply the brush to the logo. Go to the Texture menu and unlink the image. That's it. Go to the Shading workspace. Add a Mix Color node. Plug the Alpha node into the Factor node. Plug the base color into the B socket. Select any color. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.